crosslings and print on the first thing they see. Which would be you? You're his mother now. I do not have the programming. <laughs> no one does. Have you ever wondered what a robot could teach us about parenting? Or how an artificial being might navigate the complexities of survival in the natural world? Well, there's a movie that may be able to answer just those questions. The Wild Robot is an animated gem that explores these questions in the most heartwarming and unexpectedly profound ways. It's not just a movie about a robot. It's about life, love, and the wildness that exists in all of us. As some fans were quick to point out, the wild robot is poised to become the next How to Train Your Dragon, with its stellar ratings and box office tracking ensuring it has the kind of staying power that might just lead DreamWorks to another Oscar win. But does it really live up to the hype? And most importantly, is it safe for kids to watch without having to worry about some agenda being crammed down their throats? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the cesspool that are modern kids' movies. Before we dive in, take a moment to like and subscribe. If just a fraction of the 95% of you who watch but haven't subscribed yet hit that button, it could make a huge difference in helping the channel grow. And the best part is, subscribing is completely free. Before you start preparing your tissues, because let's face it, you'll probably cry with this movie, let's dive into what makes the wild robot stand out. From the delicate way it handles themes of parenthood to its stunning animation and unforgettable characters, this is one movie that tugs at your heartstrings without ever pandering or pushing any kind of agenda. So for those parents worried about that, I can verify it's good, clean fun. And the best part is that it's much more than your typical robot goes wild story. The wild robot opens with a storm. A fierce tempest wreaks havoc on a cargo ship, leaving a single robot, Razum7143, voiced by Lupita Nyong'o, stranded on a deserted island. After being accidentally activated by a curious group of otters, Roz finds herself thrust into a world that's completely alien to her cold, mechanical existence. Imagine Siri dropped into the wilderness and told to survive. Yeah, good luck with that one. At first, Roz's goal is simple, survive. But this quickly evolves when she discovers a gosling egg, which changes everything. The story shifts from a survival narrative to one about parenthood as Roz takes on the role of mother to the baby goose. Bright Bill, voiced by Kit Connor. No, she wasn't programmed for this, and yes, there's a whole bunch of wait, why is a robot caring for a goose moments? But that's where the movie's charm lies. As Roz learns about the delicate balance of nature, she also learns what it means to love and to sacrifice. Roz isn't alone in her journey either. She's guided by a wise possum named Pinktail, voiced by Catherine O'Hara, and a cunning yet soft-hearted fox named Fink, voiced by Pedro Pascal. These characters, while not central to the plot, offer sage advice and much-needed humor along the way, providing moments of levity. Together, Roz, Brightbill, and their unlikely allies form a family of sorts, one that transcends species and defies societal norms. And before you roll your eyes at the idea of a robot being a mother, know that the movie handles it in a way that doesn't feel preachy or forced. In fact, as many viewers have pointed out, it's refreshing to see a family dynamic that doesn't push any particular agenda. It's simply a story about love and the bonds we create, no matter how unconventional. This movie really knows how to tug on your heartstrings. Whether it's watching Roz navigate the confusing world of parenthood, or seeing Brightbill grow up and learn to fly, there are countless moments that will have you teary-eyed. At moments, even I started to tear up. While some might have been experiencing waterworks, the movie chooses not to manipulate emotions in a cheap way. Yes, there are sad moments, but they're earned, not forced. That being said, if you don't at least get misty-eyed when Roz helps Brightbill learn to fly, do you even have a heart? The brilliance of the wild robot lies in its ability to make you care about the characters who aren't human. Roz's journey from cold, calculating machine to loving parent is as much about learning to override her programming as it is about learning to love. And while the movie touches on themes like sacrifice and survival, it does so in a way that feels authentic. Roz could be any of us. She doesn't even have to be a robot. She could have just been another animal or even a human. 
She doesn't have the programming to be a parent, but let's be honest, do any of us? Parenthood, as Roz learns, is less about having all the answers and more about being there, doing your best, and hoping that it's enough. One of the best things about The Wild Robot is that it doesn't pander to any particular group. It's a film that's just as enjoyable for adults as it is for kids, but it doesn't feel the need to push a progressive agenda like so many others, to get its point across like so many Pixar movies have lately. It's a film that's just as enjoyable for adults as it is for kids, but it doesn't feel the need to push a progressive agenda to get its point across like so many Pixar movies have lately. I'm looking at you, Lightyear. Instead, it lets the story speak for itself. The social commentary about unconventional families is subtle and doesn't overshadow the movie's primary focus, love, survival, and the wildness of life. The movie alludes to social issues in today's world, including bigoted racism and legislation against family structures, but those parallels aren't blatant or forced. If you pay close enough attention, you do have a little slight dose of World Economic Forum ideology with a so-called 15-minute city shown. But that was brief and fleeting. In an era where animated films often feel the need to hit you over the head with a message, The Wild Robot is a breath of fresh air. And can we just take a moment to appreciate how the film handles humor? It's clever, perceptive, and never feels like it's pandering for cheap laughs. Twitter was quick to praise the film for its sincerity and wit, with one user saying it exudes sincerity while still being funny, and as the story of Roz and Brightbill progresses, she teaches him to become independent. Wow, character development? Who knew that could exist in 2024? The humor comes from a place of understanding, not from plucking low-hanging fruit, and it's all the better for it. Of course, we can't talk about an animated movie without mentioning the animation. Let's just say the wild robot is stunning. The island is brought to life in vivid, colorful detail with lush landscapes and animals that feel almost real. Every leaf, every drop of water, every feather on Brightbill's tiny body feels meticulously crafted. And here's the thing, the animation never overshadows the story. It enhances it, sure, but it doesn't distract from the emotional core of the movie. In a world where many animated films rely heavily on dazzling visuals to keep viewers entertained, the wild robot strikes a perfect balance. The animation is beautiful, but it's the story that takes center stage. And this is what we're all after. It's why I started this channel. So is the wild robot the next How to Train Your Dragon? I mean, probably. Will it win DreamWorks its long-awaited Oscar? Who knows? But what we do know is that this movie is worth your time, whether you're a parent, a child, or just someone who appreciates a well-told story, The Wild Robot has something for everyone. It's heartwarming without being cheesy, funny without being forced, and emotional without being manipulative. In the end, The Wild Robot isn't just about a robot learning to survive in the wild. It's about life, love, and the messy, beautiful chaos that comes with it. Whether you're crying alongside your kids or secretly wiping away a tear when they're not looking, this movie will leave a lasting impression. But what do you guys think about all this? Did you like The Wild Robot? And what competition do you think it has for Oscar season? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one! Okie dokie.